Is this the next Tesla? A Silicon Valley startup's all-electric supercar. We'll sit down with the CEO. Plus, using big data to disrupt the banking industry. Our reporters, syndicated tech columnist Jenny Wong and Rich Jaroslavsky of Smart News, this week on Press Here. Good morning, everyone. I'm Scott McGrew. Eleven years ago, a guy who liked cars but had no long history of building them founded Tesla Motors. He took a prototype of his electric car out to Pebble Beach in the famous car show there to let people see it, and history was made. Well, if that is a blueprint for success, my first guest is following this blueprint down to the last millimeter. Christopher Heiser also loves cars, also showed off his prototype, electric car, the Concours d'Elegance at Pebble Beach this year. This is the Renovo Coupe, a half million dollar supercar. And like the Tesla, it is built in Silicon Valley. And like the Tesla, it runs on Electron's 500 electric horses, taking you from zero to 60 in less than three and a half seconds. Christopher Heiser is a graduate of Carnegie Mellon. And like Martin Eberhard, who founded Tesla, he has not spent a single day working for a Detroit automaker. Joined by Rich Jaroslavsky, we now know him of Smart News and introducing Jenny Wong of the Charlotte Observer. Thank you for being with us. You really are following Tesla's footprint. Is that because they did it right or because to investors and car buyers we can say, well, it's just like Tesla? Uh, they did it right. I think if you look at Tesla as a success story, they started with a vision to produce an outstanding product and then they worked within the confines of Silicon Valley and really leveraged what we do best, integration of software and hardware together. They chose the right partners, they produced a car with an extremely small amount of money in automotive terms and produced it in a very, very short amount of time. And just 10 years ago, I think people were looking at Tesla uh, with a big question mark. And now with the Model S outselling all of the other marks in their category, I think six quarters in a row now, uh, it's a success. And so we involved some people, some very senior people from Tesla early in our project, including Mark Tarpening, one of the co-founders, and Dave Lyons, one of the en original engineering directors. We learned a lot from them. We learned a lot from other EV startups, whether they were successful or not. That's part of the Silicon Valley mantra. You've got to learn from success and failure. That's something that we spent a lot of time thinking about when we founded the company back in 2010 and working in secret for the past four and a half years to bring our product, the Renovo Coupe, to market. But unlike the founder of Tesla. You actually do have a background in automotive design. I think a lot of people may not know this about you, but back in your college days at Carnegie Mellon, you were actually four-time national champion of the Society of Automotive Engineers for their annual off-road design competition, the Micro Baja. What's it like going back to one of your first loves in your new company? You know, I think that that's something you'll find with any entrepreneur here in the Bay Area is that passion has to play a huge part of what you do. And automotive has been something that myself and my co-founder, Jason Stinson, who was 18 years at Intel before joining uh, the Renovo team have in spades and whether it's wrenching on cars on the weekends or traveling to races or driving cars on racetracks um, you know the cars in our blood and we see this huge opportunity a transformation of the industry and it's something that the cars really come into Silicon Valley if you open the hood of our car you'll find 80 embedded processors, almost a thousand sensors, you'll find high speed networks and you'll find telemetry systems that send all of our data to the cloud in real time. It looks more like a data center than it does a car and that's only increasing as a function of time. We feel that Tesla was a, a trailblazer but that the Silicon Valley is the right place to build the next generation of car technology companies and it's going to require a broad range of products and a broad range of technologies to make it work. But as no. impressive as the inside of your car is, I think one of the most striking things <laughs> is the outside. You made Which, a, let yes. me point out, is not really your car, right? I mean, it's a Daytona, <laughs> it's, a, it's a Shelby. Uh, which is very similar to what Tesla did because of the Elise, uh, or the Lotus, yes. rather. The, they took a Lotus and turned it into an electric car. Why not, and maybe I'm just interrupting her question, why not start with your own car completely? I think Tesla showed that a great model for a company in the Silicon Valley is pick a partner that has a lot of experience building fast, safe, reliable, high-performance cars. 
Uh, you know, designing a car is a, is a big challenge. Tesla's done that with the Model S, and they're spending about $2 billion of capital over in Fremont to make There's that happen. Yes. And so for us, we wanted to do something that followed that model, but it was really important for us to pick an American partner for the chassis. And you can't think of a more iconic brand than Shelby. This is a company that's been building supercars for almost six decades and is one of the most enduring brands in the United States. And so we couldn't be happier to be working with them. The CSX 9000 chassis that we base our car on is a fantastic platform. Uh, it's factory modified by Shelby and delivered to us. So similar to the model with Lotus and Tesla, um, but we think that uh, even higher levels of performance, it was a perfect platform for what we were trying to do. Now you haven't said much about how much this is gonna cost, although the estimates I've seen are in the stratosphere, mid, <laughs> mid six figures, I guess. Um, is there any social benefit to this whatsoever, or are you really just building a, a, super, a super play thing for the super rich? That's a great question. So, uh, you know, our car is going to cost $529,000. It's in pre-sales now. We're going to be going to production at the start of next year, and we'll deliver to our very lucky customers before the end of 2015. But to answer your question, the supercar market plays a very important role in the technology development of the automotive sector. If you look, and it's one of the reasons why we, Renovo Motors, is focused on performance. If you look at innovations like injection, overhead cams, turbochargers, and even carbon fiber, those were pioneered by people that were pursuing performance at the highest level. Carbon fiber was pioneered in Formula One in the 1980s, in supercars in the 1990s. Now it's part of the Model S, it's part of the i3, and it allows cars to be lighter, safer, and use less gas today. You cannot deliver our technology at a $50,000 or even a $20,000 price point. But what you can do is deliver it to the marketplace and allow people to understand how it's going to work and lay the groundwork for how these high performance products of today will become the mass market products of tomorrow. And Look, you get attention too, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, you, you're going to get more attention with a half million dollar supercar than you would necessarily with a, oh, $22,000 electric car. It doesn't car. hurt. So yeah. is, is, does your roadmap, to, pardon the use of the term, <laughs> but does the roadmap call for bringing this technology down to where only the merely incredibly rich rather than the vast and super rich can afford it? Or is, it, or is this, or do, you, do you see yourself remaining at the very high end of the niche? Nothing would make us happier than to see the things that we're working on go into the mass market. Our mission is to build the world's most exciting vehicles and to push the technology as hard as we can. And by focusing three to five years out ahead of where major OEMs are working, it allows us to build these technologies that then, in partnership with those companies, are going to find a much broader market. Going from what we do today to higher volumes is all about cost containment. It's what Gigafactory is all about. It's what all of these initiatives are about. But those take immense amounts of capital and immense amounts of time. You still need people pushing the envelope of what's possible. And we think the performance market where Renova Motors is positioned is a fantastic place to do that. And it also allows us to do things that are aspirational. We like to say we want EVs that kids are going to be proud to put posters of on the walls in their room that are going to encourage them and inspire them to be automotive engineers, to get involved in the challenges of transportation in the 21st century. If you look inside of the automotive market today, it's incredibly diverse. There's everything from people movers to giant earth movers. And that technology base needs all types of companies and all types of technologies were part of that story and part of that continuum. Where do you see, and I have to make this the last question, but where do you see yourself in, in let's say, 10 years? You've gone through Model 1, uh, you, you've learned some things. Where would you like to be, a supercar manufacturer or like Tesla, well, we're going to come out with a sedan? I think that, that the opportunities for us are huge, and we think of ourselves as a very diversified company. So. Building supercars is an important part of our DNA, and it's how we demonstrate what's possible and how we get our customers engaged in the technology that's available today. But we also believe that the platforms we're building have applications far beyond the supercar segment. We mean to pursue those, we mean to work with our partners, and we're going to be doing some announcements later this year of big, big technology companies, both inside and outside the automotive industry, that'll be working with us to deliver this technology to those contexts in Chris, the future. Chris Heiser, why don't you make that announcement here? You come on, <laughs> no, I'm serious, I'm serious. You come here, you make that announcement when that comes, all right? That sounds great. All right, Chris Heiser from Renovo Motors. Thank Fantastic, you thank you. with us. Up next, disrupting the loan industry by ignoring credit history in favor of credit future, when Press Here continues. Thank you.